What up, everybody? This is the Baines and Beers podcast, powered by the Vibe. This is your host with the most, Anand Baines. Today, here with my co-host and a very special guest. Today, we have Jade Monet in the building. How are you? Hi, I'm good. I pronounced good. your name right, correct? Yes, you did. Well uh, done. Monet. Yeah. What is the Monet. last name? Yeah, Monet. Yeah, so. that's, that's it. Fancy. Beautiful, beautiful. Where did you start uh, singing? So you're a singer. Yes, I um, am. And you started when you were. When I was two years old, actually, two like years way back old. when. I don't remember like that far back, but apparently. Is there video proof of this? Not video proof, uh, but my mom okay. told me, so you know, it's yeah. gotta be Mom's like. Kind true. Of right? I mean, there, I think there's video proof when I'm five, so oh, that's well. like still pretty, pretty young. Early, yeah. 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 So. yeah, but I was two years old. Apparently, we were my mom and I were on a bus and i guess i was singing or doing something and then this woman came up to my mom and she said that as soon as i was old enough she had to get me in vocal lessons just because i had good pitch mm. so my mom was like okay i guess i gotta do that yeah. like <laughs> yeah. and thankfully she did so you just dropped your project awake and dreaming yes awake and dreaming so what uh, like how'd you come up with the title the it. title was like a long process like i knew i wanted something along those lines mm -hmm. um and then we just kind of landed like as a team on awakened dreaming i actually read and victor read a book when i was younger called awakened Dream dreaming that i always just like really loved mm -hmm. and i just felt like it really just like embodied the project and it's kind of what was you know, the book about um, kind of in that like middle state of like you're not really sure if you're still dreaming is like you're not you're like did my alarm go off am I still in my dream like and it was just like about this young girl who got stuck in this dream world and she couldn't tell whether or not she was, she was like, dreaming or not which yeah. is kind of like <clears throat> I um I have like insane crazy wild dreams I think a lot of creatives do yeah. so it's kind of playing off that as well just because it's like very apparent in my life I don't even remember my dreams oh you're lucky oh my god so you like have vivid memories like oh you, you don't even want to know what i dreamt of last night like it was Guilty. just like what did you dream of oh like usually it's like very vivid and a lot of times i'm aware that i'm dreaming and i'm just waiting until i can get out of the dream last night it was like mainly focused around like i was like involved i was with like a lot of people like in the industry and we were driving to an event and yeah. we got involved in like a multiple like car crash oh goodness and i w ended up being like that one of the only ones that like was like okay so i just was like part of the whole rescue and let me tell you it's very graphic and detailed so yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's all yeah. bad dreams yeah well i mean usually they're they're not good yeah do you I'm feel like nightmares. they're like dreams or what if you're like you're in a parallel universe I mean, who knows? Like sometimes I'm like, <laughs> Here we go, man. I'm like let's get universe. into it. I feel like I'm like. <laughs> I had the wine kicking in. Here uh, we go. I was just wondering, like, how do you know if they're who that knows? vivid? Like, are you really asleep? I mean, that's like a really good question. I would like to think that I'm just asleep because they're, it, it's a horrible parallel universe. Let me <laughs> so tell you, you always remember your dream when you wake always. up. Always. Every day. That's weird. I mean, I can't remember like not remembering it. Not remembering. Even like dream. on a drunk night, like. I mean, I don't really have many of those. Oh, yeah. So. But I mean, when I was younger, like, yeah, probably yeah. not. Probably yeah. blacked out and yeah. didn't remember. <laughs> so. Damn, that's crazy. Yes. So what inspired you to make the album? Because uh, you haven't, like, dropped... Uh, well, you've kind of, like, rebranded and shifted from when yeah. you were younger to now. So why... Well, the transition. Why did you think you wanted to transition to this new type? Because you have a whole... It's a different type of vibe th that your music is. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um... I don't know. I think it just kind of like evolved as an artist. And mm -hmm. like I decided a couple of years ago just to take a step back and really just kind of figure out who I am, like not only as an artist, but just like as a person and as a woman and what my like goals were and what I actually wanted from, you know, life and music. And once I took that step back, like things started to become a lot more clear yeah. and I was just able to kind of just write for me and um, work with a bazillion different producers like different artists and and then this project kind of came out at the end of it all so it was just like this beautiful natural thing that kind of developed along the way I guess <laughs> what's your favorite song about the project Oh, you know what? So I, I always say woozy, but I've like recently fallen like in love again with a type. A type, yeah, so, that's a good song. Yeah, that's song. Yeah. Why is that? Um, I don't know, because I'm always listening to the project, and I think like I always listen like on repeat. So I think I just needed to take a break from woozy mm, and like rediscover yeah. the other songs. Yeah. <laughs> well, what inspired that song? Woozy. So I was in the studio with my producer I R Evan, who produced six out of the seven tracks. And we were actually just starting to work together. It was like one of our first sessions. And we just kind of wanted to like let loose and have some fun and just write about some random stuff. 
So we were kind of just um, like pointing at random things in the room and writing songs about them. So yeah. bef- right before we wrote wo- Woozy, we wrote Pineapple because there was like a pineapple Pineapple is sick. I love that song. Yeah. And <laughs> Woozy was actually called like Dolphin or something because he had these Master. gold, pardon? Dolphin Master. Yeah, dolphin. dolphin. Why was it called dolphin? It's like, master. I don't know. You have to, you, if you Miami met Evan, dolphins. you would understand. Fuck the Miami <laughs> dolphins. The fucking Miami dolphins. <laughs> yeah, because of the Miami <laughs> dolphin. No, just because uh, there was a dolph- a gold statue of a dolphin in the room. So I was like, oh, dolphin. And then we went on Splice and then found like a sample. And then we ended up recreating that sample with our guitarist Jasper and writing a little bit more. And so that's kind of how Woozy came about. But both pineapple and woozy were written like within written and recorded really within like 30 minutes you, you write your own lyrics right yes i do like yeah all of them um i like to like i used to be like a stickler and like just write my own music and yeah. be like i don't i write everything by myself but mm-hmm. yeah. now i'm like super 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 open to co-writing because i think it always adds to the song yeah. so i mostly wrote the lyrics but messiah came in and helped me write the verse for tell me Um, the other producer that worked on the project, Taylor Graves, who's based in LA, he helped me write some of, I think the hook and, uh, for separate lives and he produced separate lives. So, so yeah, I'm like, most of the lyrics are mine. Um, but I'm definitely open to like, like, you were always into poetry and stuff. Yes. 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 yeah. Yeah. Writing like definitely was like, I mean, Writing is just important to me as singing. Like, I feel like the two really go hand in hand. But I've been writing, like, that's been my creative outlet, like, just as long as singing has. Mm. So. What happens when you get into a funk? Creative funk? Well, (laughs) when I get into creative funk, like, I usually like to just shake things up. Like, um, I just, yeah, I, I try to get, like, my adrenaline going or I just do something that scares me or something that's, like, worth writing about. You know what I mean? And, and then I usually can, and even if you, I, I'm in a creative funk, like I still continue to write. Like mm-hmm. I, it probably isn't going to be as good as when I'm not in the funk. Yeah. But I just still continue to write and just challenge myself. And I might just like literally write on the paper. Um, I hate writing. I'm, su- I'm in such a funk right now. Yeah. But that always leads to something. And um, yeah, I just kind of like force myself out of it, I guess. <laughs> So it's kind of like therapeutic for you, right? Oh yeah, for sure, hundred percent. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what uh, what artists like inspire you? So I have four artists that have inspired like me throughout my life. Mm-hmm. Um, them being Etta James, uh, Lauren Hill, which Miss Lauren Hill now, yeah. um, Amy Winehouse, and then recently Diana Gordon. So just very four strong, strong women with strong voices and really not afraid to just stand up for themselves and stand Mm. up for women and yeah they've just been so inspirational for me yeah so which one like which one do you think you connect with the most um i mean etta james like i was obsessed with when i was young like in high school like i think i first heard about her when i was like 14 or no 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 sorry i was like 12 or like 13. And so I think I really connected with her. Um, but I also connected with Amy Winehouse because I feel like if I, I just, I don't know, like I watched her documentary and I, like, I studied her avidly as well. And her middle name is Jade. And like, there's just mm. so many like little things that connect us. <coughs> so I think out of, out of all four, like those two out of James and Amy, definitely. Yeah. So nice. What's like something to do other than music? Like what are you into? Oh God, oh my gosh. Um, oh, well, yoga. yoga, I love yoga. Yeah, yoga is probably the biggest thing. I, I'm pretty active, like in general. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I guess like yoga is probably the biggest thing. My life is so like it's music, 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 singing, music, yeah, singing, writing. So that's kind of your. Escape. That's kind of. Does that like, become overwhelming though? Um, I think like the the singing and the writing doesn't come overwhelming become overwhelming more so like the social media aspect politics, like yeah. the, all the yeah exactly all the politics of music that you every artist wishes they don't have to deal with yeah. that's what becomes overwhelming yeah yeah damn how's your relationship with your manager it's awesome i mean like i definitely <laughs> i was just, like, the answer because yeah. lurking right in there. the co- can you imagine i was like horrible <laughs> no God it's damn great. he was not letting me release my music yeah. <laughs> <laughs> funny yeah uh, no one can probably hear me, but <laughs> no, we can hear you. We can hear you. Yeah. It was funny that when I um, when we kind of first decided to like 
you know, she was gonna really like discover herself and you know, we were gonna change the direction. I told her, I'm like, we're not releasing anything for a year. And she looked at me like I was nuts. You know? Yeah, so I like, maybe didn't like them then. <laughs> like a year and a solid year and a half yeah that time before we actually put anything out yeah and uh but i mean as the process continued she understood why after yeah. a while like she like totally un- like could understand and i knew it was going to be a full transformation and i don't think she really knew the time to quite the mm-hmm. i didn't know to quite the extent either like, we had a lot of random things just happen along the way but it, mm-hmm. yeah are you happy that you made the decision to take a step back well to, to change to, yeah switch oh, up like to switch up my sound yeah. and everything yeah. oh my gosh yeah because i i definitely didn't feel like i was in my sound before and i think like so you're just doing like different type of music yeah. for the sake of doing the music kind of thing yeah like i've always i've explored every genre like when i was um in high school i did a lot of com- competitions and i was obsessed with Ed james so i did i sang a lot of jazz yeah. and i did choir when i was younger and oh, i did choir too nice i can't sing <laughs> oh dang you might have to sing for me later. I said, I can't sing. I oh, can't. We'll <laughs> They'll um, let every kid in the choir. Oh, It's still fun, though, right? It's a community. It's no. Nice. You're like, no, not when I you just, can't sing. I, <laughs> just, I just like this girl in there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay, the truth comes out. Yeah. Let's oh, name my. drop. Faithful yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, um anyways yeah so choir jazz and then yeah i spent some time in toronto and i started working with a rock producer and i was actually backup singing for an awesome rock band at the time and uh so i just my whole life was just kind of like rock and blues and just like i was singing rock music it's awesome that's like a, like it's a, totally different a lot of different it's from totally now, yeah. different yeah like it's it's very kind of like just like all the way there just like screaming yeah well not screaming but like i would always be at like the top of yeah. my like range for yeah. sure but it was really fun like and you really i cannot, I cannot imagine yeah <laughs> like a rock concert let's hear it let's hear it oh god range. no gotta <laughs> <laughs> have some tea first <laughs> have some tea. yes <laughs> But yeah, so I think I just kind of ended up in Toronto surrounded by rock music. And so naturally, like I was just writing that style. And then when I came back to BC is when I took... Um, Why'd you test. come back? Uh, I just like, I love Toronto. It was amazing. Yeah. I always say that you there's literally opportunity on your like doorstep. Mm-hmm. And I moved there. I didn't know anyone. Yeah. And I just like worked my ass off and... Um, and I met like a lot of people like yeah. pretty like pretty quickly and it was very like full on. So it just got a little bit much and Do you feel it's more competitive out there? Yeah, I mean it's definitely more like saturated. There's more people, like yeah. there's more of a scene, like um but I, d- I don't know. I didn't feel like that sense of competition. I just felt like it was just like a lot. Like all of a sudden, like I was just like thrown into like a world that I just wasn't really ready for. And so the I jungle. just yeah and so i came back to bc and that's when i decided to kind of like take some time Slow and down. just like focus on myself and then reevaluate and now here i am how would you describe your music to somebody that's like never listened to you before i would say <coughs> like this project especially is just like light and airy and fun and it's just like easy listening and i send off to summer um something that you know even if you listen and it's not your style you you can at least be like you know what she's got a good voice like yeah. i would give her another spin like i would show x you know this person who likes that kind of style of music. especially if you go look at the covers and stuff too yes. and then you go listen back to the music and really like yeah exactly that. so yeah that's what i would say what's your favorite cover you've done um oh gosh uh definitely goodbyes by georgia smith he, georgia smith. yes georgia oh, smith's amazing she's, she's, she's like incredible the one we were listening to today was dope yeah. the there was that was uh black oh yeah frank yeah, yeah, ocean yeah, yeah. Yeah. frank ocean oh, I that was sick dude that one was crazy yeah, yeah it was definitely well, like interesting we heard some range on that one i was yeah. like oh shit oh thanks thanks yeah just <laughs> 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 they were fun they were fun <laughs> Um, uh, how did, uh, how do you, what are you gonna ask? I was just gonna ask, like, what was the most frustrating song you had to do on the project? On the project? Like, what was um, the one you had the most difficulty with? I don't even know. Like, it, the whole project was so, really just flowed and it was easy. 
I would say maybe like the one that was like I guess most difficult would have maybe been erase time just because like it really like took many different forms and like yeah. it kind of started off slow and then we ended up speeding it up and but nothing was difficult like it was just really beautiful like I yeah. Yeah, I was really fortunate. Erase time is like a different song kind of yeah, from the rest of them. Yeah, it's like, it's like my fast like going faster yeah. bouncier. It's like the powerhouse song. Like it kind of yeah. I show off my range in that one. So, how do you you guys deal with your disputes? Um, <laughs> I mean, usually like I understand that like whenever he says stuff like you yeah. know like when I originally had to take the year off or whatever like he's coming from a place that he's helping me. Yeah, yeah. but I mean like musically wise like re- like releasing like how do you guys like sit down and like discuss like you guys just have like that good relationship yeah I'm, yeah we just like, yeah i mean i'm in the i'm usually in the studio for the most part oh, okay yeah. in the, especially in the beginning Whoa, um, <laughs> especially in the beginning like when we were he's definitely not working <laughs> <laughs> yeah when the project was first taking form it's not no it's not no <laughs> we can hear you though it's yeah, okay. we can we hear, hear you, you. <laughs> um yeah when the project was first taking form i was in the studio pretty much every session and um, the producer is somebody I've known for a long time and like we have a good relationship with and we would just kind of like you know as the songs are being created I would just kind of like spit out my kind of train of thought for it yeah. like how we're in, okay this is going to be the first one we release or this is going to be this one and, yeah. and kind of because the producer also shot a lot of content he shot the pineapple mm-hmm. video the fun pineapple yeah. video with Spongebob and all that stuff and he, sh- he takes a lot of video footage and and photos and stuff like he he's kind of really all, all around yeah. guy. shout out to him yeah, yeah for shout real him. shout out um, to him but yeah so i was like in there a lot and so a lot of time we would just kind of like discuss like the strategy behind it like while the song was still being made and and um yeah that's kind of like we would kind of i would just kind of toss my ideas out and if there's any resistance then we discuss why there's yeah. resistance, or, mm-hmm. you know, or I say why I think this is the way we need to do things, you know, mm-hmm. what I mean? yeah. and kind of justify it. And we all like, you know, we all get along very well. We're all on the same wave. So it was yeah. never, there was never really a whole lot of resistance. And it's never, if there is resistance, there's always a reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's not like somebody catches feelings about it. It's kind of like we understand because the reasoning makes sense. Yeah. The communication is there between you guys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah between the whole team, well, really. Like, um, you know, there was, there was basically like four of us um, that were the core of creating the project, yeah. and especially me, Jade, and, and Evan. Um, and then Jasper was the guitar player that played on a lot of the records, not all of them, but probably at least half of them um, that he played on. And we... Everything with us, like from the creation to putting it out to performing, like it was very like fluid. It was very easy, you know what yeah. I mean? which is kind of how the project came together in the first place. Just very fluid. There was not a whole lot of like issues, in, you know, in, in between. Mm-hmm. And we kind of just like did it, you know, and, and put it out there because I, I wanted to show people this new jade you know yeah. i hadn't heard much there were a few covers but no one people have been seeing her for two years yeah. on their instagram and not knowing like mm-hmm. not hearing a song you know were, so, you, were you scared in the beginning like when you were about to release that show them like that different side of you you know what it's a, it's a, such a funny question because like i wasn't scared and then yeah. i think two days before or a day before i started feeling like really sick like physically ill yeah it's like I just felt like I was just like sick to my stomach and I said to my mom it's like oh my gosh I'm so sick and then she was like do you think it's maybe just nerves and as soon mm. as she said I was like oh my god yes yeah. so obviously like I was nervous especially like the the day before and like the day of the release like I like really was just like wow like this it's go time like yeah. how did your fans respond to it? yeah were you happy with the- oh man it has been like so incredibly positive and amazing and any like critiques have been like very constructive and just like everyone has been awesome and very supportive and I I was like not necessarily expecting that because we released a video for um pineapple previously mm-hmm. that was actually the the first song we released was pineapple as a single 
and we just wanted that one it was just like light fun easy one minute and like 30 seconds icebreaker because like i hadn't released something for so long it's like a little freestyle exactly it literally was yeah. it literally was recorded and like so it was just and like i didn't change like those are the original vocals like everything's original so i just wanted to put something out there that like kind of broke that ice because it had yeah. been so long and then we released a video with it and we wanted to shake things up like i we wanted to catch people's attention with this video so we featured like spongebob in it <laughs> and the reaction that i got to that video was like super uh, uh, like a younger crowd picked it up and yeah. it went like it did very very like well on facebook but at the same time like a lot of the uh comments and stuff were like really hard for me to take because there was like a lot of conf like people were just like who the heck, like, what the F is yeah, this? Yeah. Like, that kind of stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, fuck the people. Yeah, well, I That's mean, <laughs> it was a really good. <laughs> Do you, do you yes, see yourself doing said, that though, like, constantly going over comments and like reading into that stuff? Well, I actually stopped. I stopped replying. Hopefully, I can say this, but I, I stopped replying to like a lot of the comments yeah. because I was just like, you know what? Like, it, it was like definitely impacting like yeah. everything. Like, how could it not? Like I go online and someone's comparing me to cancer and it's a song about pineapple. Yeah. Like it get like people get mean, the like harsh, yeah. like wish like death on you. And it's yeah. like, why? Like it's literally SpongeBob. <laughs> like, so anyways, like that was a really good first lesson for me because mm. that was like the first thing that I released. Mm. So I was kind of expecting like people to be kind of like that. Yeah. <laughs> but it has, I've literally not like knock on wood had one negative comment. Like, Every single comment has been like very encouraging, very supportive, yeah. very like, you know, like recognizing like the hard work that we've put in and mm -hmm. knows that this is a stepping stone. This is not like I'm not trying to win Grammys with this project. This is a stepping stone and for my career and I'm still growing and like learning as an artist. Yeah. And but yeah, so I, I have been so thankful with yeah. the response. Like <laughs> I really, really have. So. Looking back, do you feel like you could like work on something or like change anything or do something better? Um, well, I mean, I'm already doing that with my next projects. Yeah. Like I already am writing my next um, EP and then I already have songs for like the next EP. So mm -hmm. I think like I quickly realized because these songs were done like a few months ago. So I'm already like, I already know like the changes I want to make. Like I already know what I need to work on as like a writer and as like a vocalist. Yeah. So I've already started like putting Working those changes that, into yeah. action so okay. yeah why why the choice of an ep over like an album or like releasing singles so pretty much uh, we like as an artist you want to wait until the last possible moment until you're like right now i'm like you know i'm like here and I, you want to be at the t like near the top when you release like your debut album because it's mm -hmm. like that's what like is like set in stone like that goes down in like history like that's yeah. your first album whereas eps it's kind of like a student like oh she's still figuring out her sound like still building yeah still building it's not as quite as serious as an album okay. also yeah. it's like like i'll chime in a bit like people have a short attention span as it is just yeah general, yeah and um like we were reintroducing her you know what i mean which takes time yeah and, and people need time to um like you know, see her stuff over and over and over again, right? So there's no, I feel like if we're just doing, and she's also still like, you know, this process, this project kind of was her, the beginning process. And now she's like really like gripping, you know, who she is and going even further into it with the music and getting, like now she's got a, a pretty firm understanding where she wants to go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas this project was just figuring it out and so like that progress like we don't want to rush it into an album when she's still progressing and still you yeah, know like yeah. Getting, yeah. um and working and and for this project like the reason we kind of just we only put out two or we put out three songs before it came out but we didn't break it down into just singles and stuff because i just wanted to get it out like yeah. i we need to get something out this summer yeah. so i was like let's get out a couple singles and just put this out then we have something to work from, you know, like you said um, to me earlier, how there was like nothing on her page yeah. before. It was just the one old song. Whereas now it's like there's an EP, like anybody who discovers her going forward. You can have something, something to look at. Yeah, something there, there, they can yeah. search up and it's there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And so, um, yeah, that's kind of why. And like going forward, like the next EP or the next singles, we'll like, we'll see how it plays out. You know, I'd, I'd like to release a lot more singles leading up to a project yeah. next time around versus just kind of like putting out two singles and then the project. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I'd like to like put out songs and and uh, give it a little bit more time for people yeah. to take in and gain some steam and then kind of have a kind of like a what's the term? I don't know, just a further outlook on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, okay, we're we're giving six weeks in between each song, single, putting out three, four, five singles before we actually get an EP. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we'll we'll look at doing that more. Yeah. Kind of going. So it'll be really like patient. It's very really calculated, right? Oh yeah, everything is. That's planned. probably frustrating though, as an artist, because you just want to sing and like do your thing, right? Well, that's why I have Victor, because he yeah. does all the planning, he <laughs> does all that side of things, and then I just get to focus on. I mean, like singing, writing, performing, and social media. That's kind of like those are my jobs, which is a lot still, but yeah, it's more yeah. creative. So he does all the the back end, all that kind of stuff. So yeah. when you started working with him, was it was your music like becoming like was it easier to focus on music then? Oh yeah, definitely, hundred percent. It just like allowed me to kind of like do my thing while he was like hustling on like the business side of mm. things. And I definitely like to know both sides. Like I, I definitely. Um, yeah take an interest in like the business side of things as well yeah. but it definitely just allowed me to kind of just do me and focus on the music what's sure. your favorite part about music um i guess it's just the fact that it's just an amazing expression mm -hmm. you know and like i have felt so connected to so many musicians and artists throughout the years and like they just really dive in and dig you out of those dark times and you like I've found myself grasping on to music like at so many times in my life and I think that's kind of the case for everyone like so oh sorry I was like what's going on <laughs> <laughs> I just saw this yeah. hand waving like is he waving at me He's like, yeah, so like, what do you say what are you saying there you're talking too something. much you're talking too much <laughs> Coach is like, yeah, yeah you're gonna put it on the bench. <laughs> you put it on the bench. Yeah. What inspires like your actual music? Like what like topics and like what things inspire? Like say like if somebody comes like, okay, like what do you talk? What do you sing about? What do you well, say to them? I mean, honestly, like I really do draw inspiration from everywhere, like past experiences, current experiences. Like I could write a song about being in this room and the lights and the vibe, like. And I think that's kind of the case Sound for like a fire. lot of artists. The vibe, the lights, and the, the lights vibe. are fire. Go, su oh go God, subscribe the to the vibe. The go vibe. Go subscribe, go subscribe to, the to the vibe. Every yeah. studio we go into, it's just funny how the lights are always like such an important part of it. Like yeah. there's yeah. always cool lighting in every studio. It's like you know you have to like set the vibe because they're usually windowless, right? So you mm -hmm. gotta like let bring the light in like somehow. Yeah, so but yeah. So basically, that's what just whatever surround you is yeah pretty you? much yeah, yeah. whatever is around me i always pull from past experiences past like journal entries and or i do something that's you know like i'm trying now my new project is more kind of like reflective of like what i'm currently feeling like yeah. as i'm like in this process like i really tr i'm tr really trying to like get that down on paper and like write about how that has been for me and mm -hmm. just dealing with the hate and how y you know like just yeah so more kind of like current things yeah, so, yeah. but it's kind of good that you learned about the hate like now not to oh, look because yeah. I know like a lot of like bigger like artists out there like or anybody they don't look like they're not allowed to look oh man because yeah. like that can that kind of stuff like yeah it fucks you with build, your head it really does tough skin with, yeah. uh, with that even video, yeah and like I, I talked to her about it a lot I was like it was I'm actually happy that this happened because with her stuff and with her as a person there's not a lot of opportunity for people to like hate you know what I mean she's like a very like nice person and yeah. Her music is pretty, like, it is what it is, you know? You can't really... So this, like, pineapple video is funny video that we did. It's kind of a weird video. I'm so mad about Spongebob. I, don't get I know, I don't. <laughs> I don't get it, because I was like, <laughs> it was it's not like even that weird. Like, like, fucks you guys' problem. There's a lot of people hating on they this. They got a problem with everything, man. It wasn't even hate. <laughs> it was like, they would... Re so they would reshare it, and they would put, like, what the actual... Oh, so Can they I kind swear? of make, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I just swore, like, three fuck. times. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. What am I watching you? Yeah. yeah, or they're like, what the hell am I watching? Have you guys seen the video? I don't think so. Yo, pull it up on you. I mean, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I don't want to watch <laughs> okay, it. I, know. No, I haven't no, even no. watched it since because <laughs> okay. I'm like, you know what? Like, okay. it's already. We'll the, watch it after. It was. Yeah, I've heard the song. I, I like the song. It's like, you'll watch it and you'll be like, really? People like literally compared you to cancer? It's a fine video and people are just were like taking it way too serious. And yeah. So she just, I just told her after a while, I'm just like, don't look, you know what I mean? Don't look at Facebook. I'll go away. It was only on Facebook too. Like Instagram Facebook people, people are weird, loved though. it. And Facebook was like, 
it's just yeah they they have no filter and it would go and you know what the thing is like this like one chick would like go off on me and like just like just like the worst thing you could say to human and then i will specific (laughs) and i would go to the page and it's a nine-year-old jealous it's like literally like no it's like a nine-year-old and i'm like oh my god like nine-year-old like i'm not joking you it's a nine-year-old or it's like an 80 year old like it's never it's like always someone that you look at and you're like well she has no parental su- supervision on Facebook, so obviously she doesn't even know what she's, you know what yeah. I mean? Anyway, so it's sure. like you can't even, so that's why I just kind of like distance myself from that. Yeah. But it was a, such an important lesson to learn because yeah. now I'm like, and I really internalized it at first. Like I really just like c- kept it in and then I decided to kind of start sharing it. And that's when like my whole kind of, you know, my followers and my fans and they like really kind of stood up for me. Yeah, so nice. now I really do feel like I have more support. And it, even if I don't see a comment, like if someone comments negatively, then like they'll be at my defense before I can even see the comment. Nice. Yeah. So I feel like I have like a little yeah, team yeah, yeah, on me. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm like we got this. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. we got your back. <laughs> yeah. That's all. You guys are doing festival in Atlanta, right? Yes, we are. How's that? A3C. How does that come? Tell us the story. So we actually went to A3C, all three coasts, um, in Atlanta last year, and it's a festival and conference. And it was pretty much like it was an incredible like experience atlanta is absolutely amazing probably the definitely the favorite my favorite city that i've been to in the states Mm -hmm. um and so we just kind of were like screw it like let's apply this year like what's you know what's the harm you're gonna lose and we got chosen to compete in a competition where your fans and followers or whatever vote for you and then we ended up winning so now we get voted oh thank you I did. Oh my god, did you actually? I actually, I'm not even lying. I actually did. Thank you. That's sweet. I made made sure. That that really means a lot to me because, hey, now I'm going to Atlanta, so thank you. Can we come too? Hey, please do. We have a whole crew going, so you guys would fit right in for Uh, sure. That'd be fun. Yeah, we have like 12 people. 12. 12. Yeah. Are you nervous? No, I'm not because like literally we're going with 12 people. So I'm like, even if no one shows up, I got like 10 friends there that will be there. And I also met so many people from Atlanta last year. Does that worry you though? No one showing up? No, no, I'm used to it. Like honestly, I've been literally singing on stages since I was five years old. So I've been to, I've performed to uh, huge stages. I performed to no one. And a lot of the times, actually, when there's, like, less of a crowd, I'm actually, like, able to connect more with the, the people. people. Yeah. And then they are the ones that come back and and engage with my music and engage with me. So it's almost like you get, yeah, because it's the same thing. I, if you have a lot of people or, like, not as much people, like, I still look at both things as Did positive. it ever, like, discourage you? Like, when you walk out and you don't see too many people there? And, like, when or you do just, no. you just go for it? Eh? No. Performer. I literally would perform the same if there was, like, one person in the room. And, in fact, I did because I was a cover singer for a long, long, long mm-hmm. time. And I would do cover gigs, like, just to support myself. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the times I was singing at hotels, restaurants with, like, two or three people in the yeah. room. And I always had one person that was, like, really into it. There was always one person that was, like, giving me, like, yeah, like, love it. <laughs> the nod, and I right? would just really, like, latch on to them and, like, make eye contact with them. And they would okay. just give me, like, fuel. And so I, I think it was just good practice because yeah. I still, like, appreciated them and their support. So now I'm just, like, yeah, like, if it's one person or 100 people or yeah. whatever, I'm still going to How, how was uh, switching from, like, doing covers to, like, making your own music? I mean, was it hard or like, well, you're always writing, right? So yeah, like, I was always yeah. writing. So I feel like like at the same time I was doing the cover um, gigs, I was still like making original music. Yeah. I think that what was hard for me is that like a lot of people, I got kind of stuck in a box because I was constantly doing like Etta James songs, Amy Winehouse songs. Mm-hmm. Like, um, so I was being compared to them a lot. And a lot of people were like, oh, just like do that. Like that's your style of music. Like that's what you should do. Like mm-hmm. you should do that old school, like you know, like one spotlight kind of thing. Yeah. And and that's like not what my soul wants. So it was kind of hard, like breaking free from that. And I think that is why like I went so kind of different with like the rock and country, just because I wanted to try something like completely new. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. What do you want from music? Uh, honestly, like there's multiple things that I want. Mainly I want, 
I mean, like, I've been singing forever, and, like, I definitely just want to, like, inspire other, like, young musicians or any anyone, really. Like, you don't have to be young. Like, you can just be writing on your own time, and if it's, like, what you really want, like, I just want to inspire people, and I want to be singing forever. I just want to be, like, an old lady on the stage, like, <laughs> really bad, like... Yeah. So that's kind of, yeah, that's that's my goals and dreams. Has your music ever affected, like, uh, personal relationships? Uh, yeah, definitely. Like, you know. And, like, how do you deal with that? I think, like, you know, as as humans, we're always, like, evolving and growing. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I definitely had to make a decision, like, especially when I started working with Victor and started taking things more seriously. I had to cut out a lot of things. I cut out social times. I cut out you know nights out i cut out coffee dates i cut out all that kind of thing things and i think a lot of people like i did lose like friendships and things because they didn't understand that like they, that. they took it personally yeah. and they said like why aren't you hanging out with me rather than appreciating that i was going for my dream and i didn't i was in the game like the mindset right like yeah. i didn't have time in the zone I was in the zone like a night out isn't just it wasn't just a night out for me it was like oh then i'm hung over the next day and that's gonna like leech my next day and yeah. it's like then all, all of a sudden a night out is two days and it's yeah. like i just didn't have time for that you were focused i was focused yeah so i definitely like there are people that like fell off along the way but ultimately like let me tell you like they obviously it wasn't meant to be anyways like Fuck it. <laughs> right you're selfish right? yeah yeah Welcome. exactly yeah yeah. What I say, man? You have no fuck them. <laughs> fuck them. Just like every time it comes up. Like, well, they're going to be the ones that are going to come running back right away. They're probably like, oh, you change. Oh, You're not the oh, same yeah. anymore. Oh, there's literally that's like, like, what do you expect? Oh. I'm like, people like, change. People change. Oh, my God. Like, literally. Uh, <laughs> I have, like, like, in separate lives, I say, like, you say that I have changed. No yeah. shit. You stayed the same. Yeah. Because it's like, well, yeah, duh, I've changed. Like, I hope that you have changed. But if you're still talking like that, obviously you haven't. I don't know. Yeah. Some people are just stuck in the past for real for real and they don't appreciate that like you have grown in that like you're potentially like a newer evolved human. Or you're doing better you're doing better than them yeah and they're still in the same spot yeah stuck so. in the same mud stuck. they're mad <laughs> yep yeah oh, so man. so yeah that's kind of you it's it's hard in the moment but now i look back and i'm like wow well like now i have an amazing close circle of people that like really understand it and i don't have to talk to you every day yeah and they will they get it they get it. You hit up after like a couple mm -hmm. months, they're still oh, the same. And that's like the best type of relationship because yeah. it's like I'm really close with like a lot of my family members. So like that alone takes up like a lot of my time. Like when I do have time to be social and stuff, yeah. I want to go spend it with like my mom or my sister or my brother. Yeah. Or like, you know, like I just want to be with my family rather than like go party or whatever. So, nice. yeah. So it's been an adjustment, but it's been good. It's a journey. Yeah. Um, so I like to ask this question. Uh, so why should we care about your music, and why should fans care about the music? Well, I just think like if you, <laughs> 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 I why? mean, I'm just on this journey, and like I'm gonna be singing no matter what, no matter where I am, and hopefully, like so far, I've 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 had some amazing people start following that journey, and I think like if you like to feel positive and you like to like just good like vibes. yeah good vibes and just like being a part of something because like i am so much jade monet is so much more than just me mm -hmm. like it's just a whole freaking crew of people now and like i really do think like my fans my followers are a part of my experience like they're you know i'm up on a stage and i'm living like my dream and they're a part of that dream and i mm -hmm. couldn't be there without them so pretty much like if you just like want to be a part of something and like also share in the good vibes. Join the crew. Join the crew. Like <laughs> follow me, please. Um, I was going to ask, where are the three places you want to perform? Oh, three places I want to perform. So I always used to say I wanted to perform in Madison Square Garden. That'd be lit. Um, I used to think when I was younger that it was like actually a garden. Oh <laughs> <my>. <laughs> now I know it's not. <laughs> So Madison Square Garden, uh, somewhere in Europe. Like I would love to. Like a big festival. Or yeah, something? like some kind, like Lollapalooza or like. Well, I guess that's like in Europe and also in South America. So and all, I would love to perform in South America too. I would just love to perform everywhere, but Who, mainly, yeah, like. Who's someone you'd like to uh, collab with? Just collab. Oh, wow. Collab. Oh, you guys are in the same wave. Um. 
speaking of waves, Frank uh-huh. Ocean. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I had to. But yeah, Frank Ocean <laughs> is one of my number one. Uh, I like, love Frank oh, Ocean. Oh, my God. Uh, Blood Orange, Dev Hines. Um, and then Diana Gordon. I mentioned her earlier. Yeah. I would I would love, 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 love to collaborate with her. So those are a few. The list could go on. Yeah, though. Really? <laughs> Have you ever collabed with anyone before? Uh, yeah, definitely. I On Tell Me, one of the tracks from oh, Awakening yeah, yeah, Dreaming, yeah, yeah. I collabed with Messiah, who's yeah, yeah. Um, Victor Olson Manager. Shout out Messiah. Yeah, shout out Messiah, yeah. for real. Are you, so are you really picky with who you want to collab with, or are you like open to collabing with local artists? Yeah, I'm definitely open to collabing, but I do have like certain people that I would or would not yeah. collab with for sure. Gucci, Gucci, Gucci's, and they're not going to get on yeah, the Yeah, they're trap. not going to get on the track. So <laughs> like, yeah, if that guy reached out to you, just be like, no, man. Well, I would definitely do like a studio what session. What if I had a good Gucci, Gucci, yeah. Gucci? Man? Yeah, I mean, I'm open to anything. <laughs> I would get in the studio and see what happens because you never know. Like that person could be more than just Gucci, Gucci, Gucci. Yeah. Um, so I'm definitely open to anything, but I would be very specific and it, to like, you know, for who I actually collaborated with. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, so what's in store for the future? Well, we're just... Where do you want to be in, like, a couple years? In two years? Um, yeah, yeah, two years, yeah. Oh, man. I mean, yeah. I just want to keep building, like... Oh. We're good? We're good. Oh, yeah, keep going. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just want to kind of keep building on top of what we're, we're doing. And, like, hopefully two years, um, hopefully, like, a year and a half, two years, I will be, like putting out my debut album and I'll be taken more seriously as an artist touring and hopefully internationally well probably internationally and yeah yeah, just kind of keep building like I mean two years seems like a long time but it's really not like especially you know what I mean if you're working hard it's like the two years are already planned out you know we already have like we're already on like uh on a schedule and like so I think um it comes like a lot faster and so I just kind of want to keep building on what we're doing now Oh, that's nice. That's yeah. awesome. Thank that's you. great. That's <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, thank you. Oh, yeah. You going to sing for us? Oh, yeah. my gosh. You would. You would. Are we like, is it like we're ending now or something? How about time? We have time. Yeah. Yeah. I like you going. Yeah. Oh, my God. What going. should I sing? Sing. Uh, I don't mm. know. One of my tracks, I guess. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, let's sing yeah. one of your tracks. Pineapple. Pineapple. Yeah. Oh no, I'm not gonna do pineapple. I'll do um, I'll do a type. Okay. Okay, but you guys can't look because that's just All awkward. Right. I'm just gonna be like so looking look right down? at you. I'm, down. I'm, on the phone. I'm, right. I'm going on your live. Okay. Go on, on my live. Okay. Oh my god, this is so awkward, you guys. <laughs> okay. I'm only gonna do a little bit. No, like five minutes. <laughs> the song hasn't even it's five like minutes. Home. It's just like. <laughs> Get Double the song. Just okay. keep singing. Oh, my bad. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. I got a type. I got you all in my mind. It's been a while. It's been the longest time since I found someone just like you. Since I met someone just like me too i swear that we've been here before i know i've seen this place haven't we been here before i'm remembering your face okay damn that was, so, 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 that was actually <laughs> really good. Yo, oh, I, hopefully, well, hopefully the mic picked that up properly. Holy I know, I was going to say this mic, though. Like, like, yo, like, 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 that was, that was, like, that was the one, right? That was the one. Oh, thank yeah, you. That was really awesome. Good. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we, we gave Tion Gibbs a pound, so oh. it's a pound for that. Yeah, you get a pound. <laughs> Tion is tuning in, by the way. So oh, what's up? I don't know if he is anymore. He was like, what the hell? That's crazy. Oh, man. Yes. Damn, a ty- what inspired that song? Because there's a lot of emotion in there. Yeah, yeah that one literally was a freestyle. Um, my guitarist, Jasper, who is freaking amazing, was just kind of like grooving out. And then I just started singing and then we recorded it. And th- the main lyrics, like it's all just a freestyle. I just mm-hmm. started like kind of singing about, it's like deja vu. Like um, I'm kind of describing like a type, like one of my types of guys or whatever. Yeah. Or, everyone has like that type where like they shouldn't go for and they've yeah. learned in the past that they shouldn't and why they shouldn't and there's red flags there but they still kind of like find themselves 
in that. You know what yeah. I mean? So I'm just kind of talking about like that deja vu feeling of like repetitive relationships. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. what's your type of guy? Well, I mean, so I do have two types. Like one, the one type is like the guy that's like no good, but I never end up with that guy. Like that mm-hmm. guy is just like whatever. But my type is definitely just a. In order to like be with someone like me, like you have to really like guys always say that they like want a strong female, and it's like a lot of them cannot nah, even can begin handle to handle someone that like <laughs> nah. works hard and and yeah. it, and they're like wh- whoever I'm with has to understand that like it's like we're we're coming into the relationship as like both whole people, and like yeah. I have my own things and my own dreams and everything that i want to focus on and i will help empower them and like i will evolve with them but i'm never gonna be like their side i'm never gonna be like that chick that's just like i feel like open relationships would work well in the music industry oh man i don't know know. what do you think about open relationships hey it's each your own i mean like i'm not against anything i think whatever works for for you Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. for sure no we mean like for you like what you do but uh, would um, you be in one? No, I've never been in one. I would. I. That's a difficult question. I would have to like see what happens. I guess like yeah. if the, if I was with someone and I felt like that was what I wanted to do, then mm-hmm. yeah, like I that's would. probably hard dating an artist, man. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, like, they're so yeah. dedicated to yeah. what they want, like, and they're, they're traveling a yeah. lot, and they're yeah, it's difficult, but whatever. <laughs> Fuck, whoever yes. one house husband, man, I was down. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> oh my God. stay at yes. home, dad. I stay at home, stay at home dad. dad. Okay, For real. clean. I love that. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, That's the dream. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's the dream. Dream for a guy. Coach, you got anything else? Nice. What else? What's else going on? You guys got? Yeah, man. What's new? What's new with you, man? Dude, we were just getting ready for this fortune show on Monday. Oh, oh yes, yeah, yes, fortune. yes, yes, yes. On Monday. Midnight Mondays, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Midnight Mondays. It's Fortune's R and B night, weekly R and B night. We so. were kicked out of there. We One did? time. Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember <laughs> oh, that. Oh man, God. It's a nice place though. I really yeah. like it. enjoy it. Yeah. The music's really good there always. Yeah, Fortune's good. Yeah, it's it's gonna be good. So yeah. How many times have you you performed? Probably a lot in Vancouver then. I have. I've yeah. performed all over. Like, but you haven't performed this album yet, right? Will no, this be the first time? Uh, have I? No, 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 I had a release party and I kind of half performed it. She yeah. performed like unfinished versions of it in Toronto at Canadian Music Week. Yes, yeah. So okay. in May, we were in Toronto for two weeks and she had two showcases at Canadian Music Week there. Nice. Mm-hmm. So, and at that stage, we had like had the foundations of a lot of these songs. So she played them then, but they evolved quite a like some of them evolved quite a bit afterwards. and. Some of them were like brand new, or some, and some of them weren't even made still at that time. So, this fortune will be the first time performing it like in full, like the completed versions. Yeah. And then mm. we'll go to Atlanta, and then we're actually going to LA for two oh, weeks. Oh, yeah. And she's got two shows yeah. in LA. Nice. Damn, that's dope. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. I'm and we'll very come excited. Back and probably end up doing something else here once we get back. And yeah. Hopefully before Christmas, so. Nice. So busy. Busy, 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 busy. Excited. Yeah. Are, are you um? So for your performance, so when you perform, like, cause your songs are like, like you're even performing clubs. It's not yeah. like they're like hyper songs. Like, but I guess it comes with the crowd's gonna come just cause your show, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, but how's like performing those type of songs? Like, you know, what what type of In crowd a club shows environment? Up? Yeah. That's what I'm just saying. I mean, like you said, like a lot of the times, like people yeah. are there to see me, mm-hmm. so they know what they're getting. Um, but it's always different. Like I've yeah. performed like restaurants, festival stages, clubs, bars. Um, this like this particular project is actually like really fun mm-hmm. live. So it actually does well in a club setting nice. because it's very bouncy. It's like very like entertaining. Um, it's there's not there's like a type is a little bit slower, but even that one is is dreamy. So it's like you can it's still entertaining to watch so it's not it's not like a boring set to perform at all um what's your favorite like place to perform at? like a bar the club like on a festival stage yeah festival stages because cool. you have better. room to like work it and you just yeah you have like this space and it's just usually it's a there's fun like, environment a crowd. Too, right? yeah. exactly so oh, yeah that's awesome but i like everything really okay so what's some um advice you'd give to someone that's like you know, young, and they like singing, and they want to get into this. What's something you'd tell them starting off? I mean, I would just say start. Like, I have so many 
young girls and guys to message me and ask like what is the first step and it's just like literally just taking that step and just like finding what that means for you whether it's just like posting a story posting it in your stories Mm -hmm. so it's not like permanent on your page um that's like a great start or like open mics talent shows like i started doing talent shows like performances through churches even though i didn't go to church like just random stuff like anything i could do to perform i did so if you really want to sing and you have that in you then like just start just do it don't be afraid of like what anyone says because you're not doing it for anyone like ultimately why i'm gonna continue working on music is because i love it and it's for me yeah you know so if you have that like passion in you for music and for creating then just go for it like no one can say shit like just do it see that's what i feel like a lot of like artists nowadays like they start off and they just want to be so calculated right off the beginning yeah. like they want to like oh i like, need yeah. to be this i need to be that because yeah. they see the yeah. other guy beside them he lives yeah. right beside them but he's like, got that and that so he needs to have that and that yeah. yeah but clearly there's a lot of work put behind oh this. man you gotta have years of like i mean even if you blow up like it takes a certain type of artist like lil nas x like he's a good example like he was he is a star like yeah. he blew up off of one song and he was able to like continue with it and now he's like he's good right yeah. whereas like a lot of people can't handle it and they just become one hit wonders so it's like you may like you some? uh huh? sure <laughs> you may like dream of like that like moment but yeah. like what you don't see is like what happens after that moment like in order to stay on top in order to stay on like that number one like it's yeah. a lot of hard work and so, yeah, you got to be afraid of not making mistakes because let me tell you, I've made years of making mistakes. Yeah, I've yeah. had, like, I've been through it and, like, now I know I'm on the other side and I can realize that, like, all that, like, adds to your success. And now it feels so good to be, like, having the positive comments and, mm-hmm. like, going to perform in the States and, like, now this feels so good because, like, I've been in the lows and I can have that to compare to. Yeah. So there's really, like, there's no success without failures. failure. So you... You have to be like open to failure, which I'm very open to. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people aren't. I know. Too it's, many egos. It's, and that's what will stop people. Yeah. And like, I will never stop because I will always find a lane that I'm like, I'll never stop making music. Like whether it's, you know, I always say like, um, just starting like a wedding band. Like that's before like my plan B was like, oh shit, like what's my plan B going to be? Like, oh my gosh. But now I'm like, I always will find a plan B in music because there's so many different lanes. I can ghost write, I can song write, I can yeah. write for movies. I can, I can have a wedding band. Like there are so many lanes. If you're willing to devote your life to music, then it will like, it will clear a path for you. No, you got a sick voice. You just keep singing. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, well, well. <laughs> I think you'll make it. Thanks. I think you'll be good. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, guys. I was Thanks. on spot too. I was like, oh shit, that was impressive. That was Thanks. very impressive. Someone yeah, was I impressed. What? Oh, shit, I said your name. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Gotta cut it out. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's a right. secret man. Oh. Okay. Yeah, we can't say his name. Oh. Oh my gosh. Secret man. The man He's behind. Secret. <laughs> He's secret. We can't even talk about him. Yeah. Secret. Even though we appreciate him, we appreciate yeah. him a lot. <laughs> Best guy. Yes, he's the vibe. Just call him the vibe. The vibe. The vibe. He really is the vibe. Call him the vibe. He, 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 is the vibe. <laughs> he just came in for like many wins today. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Much Big W's Corkscrew came in clutch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so at the end of each show, we like to give each guest a spotlight of to give any advice. Well, we already did the advice question, I guess. And uh, well, just plug your shit. Talk my shit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Awaken Dreaming is out now on all streaming platforms. You can follow me on every platform, Instagram, Twitter, all that jazz, at, at LoveJadeMonet. And I'll be performing at Fortune for Midnight Mondays, our weekly R&B night on Monday, the 23rd. And then I'll be performing at A3C in Atlanta on October 12th. And then LA, I have two shows, October 24th and 28th. So... Yeah, if you're in the States, then catch me there. And if not, then, you know, catch me. Tune in. in. Tune in. Yeah, tune in. Support. support. Love everyone that has been a part of this journey. Just show up. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck it. Show up, people. (laughs) 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 Uh, But yeah, anyways. Well, that's thank all from you us. For coming. Thank you for of coming course, on the thank show. Thank you for having me. Thank uh, you so much. We had a very really good time. We are the Beans and Beers podcast. Oh, wait, go subscribe to the Vibe. We are the Beans and Beers podcast, and we are out. The Vibe.